Hello everyone. Got something a bit different tonight. We're going to do an Arc Nova sponsors tier list. I'll be going through all 66 sponsors that are available on Board Game Arena. And I'll be looking at this as if this is my opening hand of cards and I have to pick which cards. So instead of like the usual S or A or B tier, I've got kind of percentages that I'd pick these cards. Uh, obviously this is extremely variable, it's going to depend on player count, map, other cards in your hand, the projects that are available, so there's a lot of factors to consider. But I'll try to give the rankings based on like their general strength and then specific situations where they're better and different player counts where they're better. I think we're all ready to go. Uh, and just a small note, I will be looking at the chat a bit less today because uh, I don't want this to take three hours. I'll try to keep it reasonably quick. So, less chat. We're starting off with Adventure Playground, which we can see on the right here. The job of this card is to just give flight points very early in the game, uh, which is great. This is like the equivalent of playing a small animal. It gives you four appeal. If it's your first four appeal, that's immediate four income. So no complaints with this card, I actually like it a lot. If I see this in my starting hand, I'm starting with it roughly 95% of the time. I'd have to have some really good other things to not pick it. Another thing I'll mention is that generally you do want to keep some sponsors from your opening hand. Sponsors are just stronger than nearly every other card in the game. So I'd always be looking to start with one or two sponsors at a minimum if they're available and Adventure Playground is one of the better ones. It's roughly 95%. Next we have Aquarium. Uh, so you need three reputation to play it, but anytime you play a water icon into Yuzu, you get two appeal. Uh, it immediately gives you four appeal, so it's never ever a bad card to play. Even if you only get four appeal from it, it's like the same as a playground, but a bit harder, harder to play and takes up more space. But then it has huge upside. Uh, like any water animal you play is just giving you two tickets more. There are some water animals that require two water icons, like the pelican or Sumatran tiger. That makes them pretty insane to play. It just gives you a lot of value. So this is definitely one of the best sponsor cards. Um, it's like barely not 100%, it's at the very top of the 95% tier. I'm picking this in most starting hands. Not all of them, but most. It's just generally very, very strong. Next is Arcade, one of the newer sponsors. Uh, size 3 just covers a little one spot on your map. Gives you two appeal immediately and then gives you income for every 10 appeal that you have. And then the end game is, if you have more appeal than other zoos, you get two tickets per zoo, uh, capped at four. So I'm a little bit like less high on this one. Uh, the two appeal immediately is nice, not as good as the playground. The income is not really noticeable. You don't notice it at all in the early game and then Towards the end of the game, yeah, you get a couple of extra money, but not that great. The end game's pretty nice. But there are a lot better choices. Um, this is going towards the bottom of 90%. I'll say on map specifically, this is much better on Observation Tower, where you are getting a lot of extra early appeal from the Observation Tower ability. So I'd be more inclined to pick it there. But 90% is still like a really high number, so if this is in your opening hand, I'd be looking at keeping it unless there are four other things clearly better. Archaeologist. This is going straight into the 100% tier. Uh, just absolutely insane on some of the maps. It's generally strong on any map. But then some maps like the Silver Lake uh, Outdoor Areas Research Institute, it's just, it breaks the game. 
So basically, when you cover a border spot that has a reward on it, you get to take any reward from your map. So if you're on outdoor areas, you can use this to get an early two partner zoos, uh, just starting on the left side of your map, work your way up from the bottom. Then you get your third partner zoo, like a free second worker, super early into the game. It's just nuts. On Silver Lake, you can use it to get a second worker before the first break, just from spamming reputation because of because it has so many border spots on it. And then even on maps where it doesn't seem to do much, it just gives you like a repeating five money a lot of times, three or four times. On the beginner maps, it's <laughs> don't play it on the beginner maps. You get like all your extra workers immediately. It's just absolutely stupid. When they were playing the WSBG BG games on the beginner maps, they banned archaeologists for good reason. It's just dumb on those maps. Baboon Rock, one of the worst of sponsors, uh, mainly because primates are just, they're harder to play, they're rarer, they have a lot of requirements. Uh, it's not the worst sponsor out there. Like any, any sponsor that gives you two tickets for playing something is decently good, but Aquarium is so much easier to find those water animals and play them. The primates are much harder to find. Plus the cost of six is actually quite annoying. It can often cost you one tempo to play it. It would be at kind of towards the bottom of the consider range. I wouldn't start, I probably wouldn't start this unless Primates was one of the base projects. Uh, Bard Owl Hut. It suffers sort of the same problem as Baboon Rock, although birds are the best animals to play. But the six strength cost is just really annoying. Uh, it makes it kind of hard to play early because you either have to cover an X spot on your map, which often isn't where you want to start on your map. You want to start next near reputation. And if you don't start on an X spot, you have to X out an action, which just hurts your early game tempo. But it would be sort of at the higher than Baboon Rock, Baboon Rock at least on consider. Uh, specifically on the map Commercial Harbour, where you can sell cards for three money each, this card is actually pretty good, because you're just getting a bunch of extra cards every time you play birds. And obviously, if birds or even species diversity is one of the base projects, it could be a good idea to keep it anyway. So it's a consider. Basic Research. This, the main problem with this card is it requires the upgraded sponsors. So... If you're starting with this card in your hand and there's no other card that requires upgraded sponsors, I would not be inclined to keep it. I don't typically upgrade sponsors unless I have a reason to. Now, what does it actually do? You need to be under 25 appeal to play it. Whenever you play it, for every two icons in your zoo, you get one conservation point and all other players get two money for each conservation point you get. It's not capped like a release of Payton, so you can get a lot of conservation points from this. But you would need a reason to start it, like Explorer or one of the other upgraded sponsors. So for that reason, it's somewhere in the middle of Consider. But has has a pretty high upside. Just not a good enough reason to upgrade sponsors, in my opinion. Breeding Cooperation. Yes, under, under 26 appeal, correct. Breeding Cooperation. Uh, this one requires two partner zoos to play, so it's not a super early game card unless you're on outdoor areas, maybe. But it just gives you two cubes, and you can use those two cubes to help you support the base conservation projects. So it only works on the base ones. It doesn't work on ones that are added by players, which makes it a little bit annoying. Um... The end game is if you support five projects, then you get one conservation point, which is not the easiest. Sometimes you hit it, most of the time you don't. So I'm a bit... I know they're good cards, but I'm a bit down on them compared to everything else. I, I put them above everything else in consider. I might even put them in depending. 
just it's not a great sponsor to start with but if there's not much else i would be inclined to keep it a lot of the time particularly if the projects are hard or you like maybe the rewards at five and eight conservation points are worth getting then this could be worth considering to help you get there faster it's not the worst breeding program exactly the same but requires two science which is much easier to get so for that reason it's same tier but slightly ahead of breeding cooperation Oh yeah, mid-game sponsors are definitely going to be a lot lower in in this list. Uh, like Waza Special, we'll see later, is quite a lot lower. But I feel like that's that's fine. In the mid-game, you have a better idea of what sponsors you need. <laughs> is it a cop-out? Well... The problem is, as you know, making a list of this yourself, Yeti, is just so highly situational that it is really impossible to rank these accurately. But depending is more likely than consider for me. And reconsider is like, if you're picking this, you should really reconsider your, your life choices. <laughs> so I'm fine with these tiers. Cable car, we're not copying out with this one. Uh, very similar to aquarium, but harder to play because that's six cost. Also, slightly less good because there are just less rocks in on the cards than water icons. But any card that's giving you four appeals straight away and two tickets each time you play a rock icon is really good. Uh, it's I'm going to have it below the playgrounds just because it is kind of awkward to get out, but it's still definitely... I would keep this a lot of the time. Diversity Researcher suffers kind of the same problem as Basic Research in that it's not quite good enough to upgrade sponsors by itself, but it is a decent card if you have sponsors already upgraded. So for that reason, it is going to be on the consider list. But it, it can give you a bit of early money if you've already got some of these tags. And then the end game is actually pretty good uh, because you generally do want to get water and rock tags because those animals are just efficient. So if you do get some, you get points at the end. And then like, actually ignoring the requirements for water and rock spaces is super handy. Even being able to build over them is funny on some, some maps like Observation Tower. You can use the tower a lot more often than you normally would be able to. So I'm going to have it at the top of Consider. Engineer. So when you're using your build action, you can build an enclosure. Sorry, you can build exactly one more of the same kind of enclosure. Uh, it can be pavilions or kiosks as well. Obviously not special buildings like the aviary because you're limited to one of them. And then if you fill your map completely, you get five appeal. So Engineer has a lot of great uses. I like to use it in the late game if you have... There are some games where you just have a ton of money and you just need to get stuff out. You can use this to just build two size 5 enclosures and I think that's a perfect use for it. In the early game, it can be useful for getting out like two pavilions in one turn. Or in the super early game, I've looked at a replay where someone just spams pavilions and kiosks as... Just a one build action for like five turns in a row and it's super fun way to play and gets your income really high early without playing animals. I'm still pretty down on this. I'm like putting it slightly ahead of the breeding cooperation and programs, but I would not pick this a lot of the time. I feel like it can be a trap encouraging you to build too much, uh, spend too much on buildings. But it definitely has its uses, I just would not pick it a lot of the time. Are there any cards in hand that would uh, want me to keep Engineer? Not really. Maybe you'd be more incentivized to if you had Architectural Zoo uh, as an endgame goal. It has some synergy with side entrance, but probably not enough of a reason that I'd be like, oh yeah, I really want to keep, keep Engineer now.
Expert in herbivores. I'll get a lot of the experts out of the way, and this is going to be super boring. But this is these are all going to be on depending. I think they're going to be at the top of depending. I like them more than these. I I would not for engineer. I wouldn't say there'd be any map that I'm more inclined to keep it on. Maybe ice cream parlors I'm the most inclined to keep it on, but I don't think map would really influence that decision too much for me. Expert in herbivores. In a two-player game, if this is not one of the base projects, if there's no herbivores or species diversities, I'm not really inclined to keep them because they give you three money and they disincentivize your opponent to play herbivores, which is okay, but it's not amazing. The early money is great, uh, but I would keep it if there are no better cards, otherwise you can easily skip this and not feel too bad. So we're going to see the same for most of these expert cards. Uh, herbivores and predators are pretty similar. I will say, if you're playing a four-player game, these cards are actually just insanely good. They obviously scale with play, play account because uh, this triggers anytime anyone plays a herbivore or predator. So they scale very well with player count. Three or four-player games, I would be looking to keep these most of the time. Two-player games, much less so. Uh, and yeah, if it matches one of the base projects, it's an easy keep, because there is going to be a ton of herbivores or predators played. So yes, depends on play count for these guys and projects. Expert in large animals and expert in small animals are pretty similar, and I'm more inclined to keep these, because most animals are just large or small, apart from three sizes, whereas only like one-fifth or so of the animals are herbivores. So these two you're more likely to make use of. Uh, and these are just a great way of saving a lot of money throughout the game, expert in large animals especially. You really notice it towards the end game when you can like, you have a partner zoo and you have expert in large animals and all of a sudden a white stalk is costing you like to money or something, it's kind of ridiculous. So I I do like these cards. It's around 75% I'd start with them. If there were no other sponsors, I would easily start with them. If there were other sponsors ahead, which we're going to see quite a few of, then yeah, you don't mind leaving these guys out. Expert in large animals, you're more excited about on outdoor areas because you're encouraged to play large animals. But otherwise, just solid cards. 75% is still a high number. Would not feel bad about starting with these at all. Just a lot of other better sponsors, which we'll get to. That's those. Uh, so all these expert on continents. They're not really all made the same. So we'll start with expert in Asia. This is the best one of them. I'm keeping this in like 90% of games, maybe even 95% towards the bottom there. Just super solid. Asia is the best continent to play animals from. It has the best animals, and this guy has the best ability. Every time you play an Asia icon, you get a pavilion, which is a point. So that's pretty insane. Uh, you're always going to get good value out of it. There are just too many good Asia animals. Even if it's not one of the base projects, I'm always happy starting with Expert in Asia, Expert on Asia. Africa is a bit less good. Uh, the clever ability does come in handy a lot of the time. Like, the amount of times that I play an African animal in the late game and go like, oh yeah, I have a clever now, this is super useful, is underrated. It's less good than uh, Expert on Asia. Quite a bit less good. I'd put it like roughly at the top of the 75% tier. Obviously, if Africa is one of the base projects, you'd keep it in a heartbeat. But if it's not, and if uh, habitat diversity is not, I still don't mind starting with it. Australia, 
Oh, plus, sorry, the end game on Africa is all right as well. You generally don't want to be keeping X tokens, but if you are supporting a project as your last turn and you don't know what to pick as a reward, three X tokens is three points, so that's not bad at all. Australia has no end game, but whenever you play an Australia icon, you get to pouch two, uh, pouch one card for two tickets. You get to do it straight away when you uh, play it. It's not the worst. It gives you some points throughout the game, but Australia is the icon that you're going to play the least of out of all the continents in most games. Therefore, it's probably worse, even though it has a better ability than like Europe. I'm going to put it in depending on the projects. I'm still putting it above Engineer. I think I'm still fine with that. Europe's going to go right next to Australia, but maybe a slightly above it. You can basically ignore the end game on this one. It's pretty rare that you're going to fill five size one enclosures to get one appeal. But Europe is a continent that has very cheap animals. It's very easy to spam out a lot of small European animals. So if Europe is one of the base projects, this is like insanely good value because it, it enables you to play a bunch of those, like the small reptiles. And yeah, it can give some points during the game. Like it gives one point immediately. If you have two or three Europe already, it's two or three points. It's not bad. Obviously, if you already have a bunch of Europe icons, then yes, it is the perfect time to play it. It's not one that you would prioritize playing early to like, oh, I need that extra size one enclosure. It's like, it's mainly for the European icon and some points and a few size one enclosures. Yeah, Oz not having an endgame is fine, I think, because the power is pretty good. Americas is the second best one of these, in my opinion. Uh, g giving you a kiosk is slightly less good than a pavilion. America is also like the second best continent to play in my opinion. And it has an end game that's not very hard to hit. If you play this card early, it's super easy to hit. And like the early kiosks really help with your income. So I rate this fairly highly. I'd be looking to keep this 90% of the time, even if America's wasn't part of the projects. Explorer. So we're getting on to the second type of upgraded sponsor card, which is ones that you pay attention to. If you start with Explorer, you're heavily incentivized to upgrade sponsors because it has such a good effect. So immediately for every icon, different icon you have in your zoo, you get two money. And then for all future icons you play into your zoo, you get one ticket and two money. I'll, I'll have a look at readjusting everything after. Even, I, I'm not sure how much I'm going to consider cuteness into the, the re-ratings, though. <laughs> so this is something that, that you want to play super early. Uh, because one ticket and two money for each new icon is insane. It can make playing something like a raccoon three tickets better and six money better. Just for, like, the bear, predator, and America's icon. And it really adds up. You get a lot of extra money and tickets this way. I'm never starting a, an upgraded sponsors 100% of the time, but it's going to be at the bottom of the 95% tier. If I see this just by itself without many other good sponsor cards, I'm still picking it. But if, they, if, if I have a lot of other good sponsor cards, I don't really mind not picking it. But yes, obviously, if you are going to upgrade sponsors, this is the one of the premier cards to, to use. Federal Grants. It's uh, kind of insane how good this card is, but I don't know. Just looking at it, it, it's kind of, it looks kind of mediocre, right? It gives you three money straight away and it gives you three income, but... It has so many benefits, like the instant three money is good. It's like that's on par with one of these experts. But then three income each round is 
really good because you get a lot of income from early appeal, but once your appeal is at a certain point, the income like drops off, but this just helps boost it through the mid game, giving three flat income. Uh, it gives you a science tag, which is very useful in playing other things like the science museums, which we'll get to later. And the end game is the easiest end game to hit. You're always going to get nine reputation. Not always, but 99% of the games, you're going you're gonna to get nine reputation. So it's a free ticket at the end, a free CP at the end. This is right at the top of 100%. You can argue if it's ahead of Archaeologist or not. I'm going to put it slightly ahead. Even though I'd still be keeping both of these all the time. And yet yeah, the science tag is really useful. Foreign Institute. There's not too much to say about this card. It just gives you two reputation and... Some of the time it gives you a conservation point at the end. It gives you a science tag, which is useful. If this thing cost five, like required a strength of five, it would be uh, easily in 100% because reputation early is so important to get. But because it costs six, it can be a bit of a tempo loss to play it, similar to these uh, six costs down here. But still really good. One thing this allows you to do is it, it enables a round one upgrade. Whether that be on build or sponsors, it can be really useful. Like you take your two reputation university, you play this, you have an upgrade instantly. You can you can uh, build without. You can use your first build action as an upgraded build action, which is just very efficient. So it's at the top of ninety five percent. I'm gonna put it like just a bit below aquarium. Head of archaeologists because archaeologists needs the science. Yeah, archaeologists can be annoying if your opponent takes the one science uni. That is like the only downside of archaeologists. Free range new world monkeys. So for the longest time, I didn't know what this card did. But so for each reward space on the map that you are connected to, but you have not covered, you get one appeal. And then at the end of the game, you can basically ignore it. But for each reward spot that you are not, sorry, for each two reward spots that you are not connected to, you get one conservation point. There is one map that you should consider picking this on, and that's Silver Lake because of all the different, just because of the quantity of uh, rewards around the lake, you can actually reasonably get six or seven tickets from this as an early game card. You can also consider it if primates are one of the base projects and you have some other primates, or if species diversity is there, it's not bad either. The primate icon can be hard to find. But yeah, I'd be fine ignoring this most of the time. It's just, it encourages you to do something that you don't want to do, which is not take rewards off the floor. Taking rewards off the floor of your map uh, helps your tempo, like getting early money or X tokens or drawing cards. Not doing that is just kind of weird. <laughs> Good thing it's max 25 appeal or, or it would be truly broken. I don't know about that. <laughs> it's one that you do want to play in the early game, though. Like, if you're going to play it at all. You don't want to go, like, in the late game having picked up nothing on your map. That would be insane. Geologist. This one is kind of highly map dependent, but not really. It's just uh, it's just very strong in general. It gives you a really underrated amount of money. On a map like Ice Cream Parlors, if you're covering every spot next to rock, this gives you 27 money throughout the game, and then an easy conservation point at the end. Not only that, but if you already have a rock icon in your zoo, like an adventure playground, it gives you three immediate tickets as well, because it has a rock icon itself. So this is one of my favorite cards. Yeah, the, the money it gives you throughout the early game as you're building is 
really noticeable. Like your opponent's going to be on zero money. You're just going to have 10 or 12 left over from all these building actions. It is great for tempo, uh, pretty easy end game to hit and can give you some immediate points. I'm going to put it slightly ahead of Foreign Institute, I think. Just still slightly behind Aquarium. Aquarium I might even move up into 100%, it's that good. Guerrilla Field Research. Kind of like Foreign Institute, except the requirements are a lot harder, but it's a lot easier, like, it's a lot cheaper to play. It gives you two reputation and one conservation point immediately. That's all it does. But the requirements make it kind of iffy to keep at the start of the game. Um, it's not too bad because if you get the uh, two reputation uni and the two science uni, you have your three tags. But it does mean not picking up the hand size uni, which can be really annoying to play without. So, I mean, if you already have another science icon in your opening hand, like a Federal Grants or like an Archaeologist or a Foreign Institute, then this is a great card to pick up. But I would not prioritize it if you don't have another one of those cards and there are better cards to keep. It's something like the top of 75% for me. I'm still looking to keep it if I have any sort of science help, but if not, then it's one that you can sacrifice. Guided school tours. This is one I'm probably going to get the most grief for from, from Yadi. So he loves this card. I like it too, but I consider it more of a like mid-game card, honestly. Early game, the, sh the uh, conservation point doesn't do a whole lot. Yes, it can, it can maybe help you win the race to five or eight conservation points, but not necessarily... Um, you can combine it with an animal or another sponsor to, to get you to two conservation points, which can make it good. The one appeal is pretty much meaningless. The end game is okay. The end game you're not always going to hit, but you're going to hit it maybe 50 or 60% of the time. So I, I consider it a really good card, but there are a lot of better choices. So it's going to be at the bottom of 90%. 90% still super high. I'm still high on the card. I just think there are better choices. And yeah, Aquarium is simply just points are really good. If you consider that one point is worth about three money based on how the animals are balanced, uh, this gives you six money, like two points, f sorry, four points instantly, which is the equivalent of 12 money instantly, which is like three, three breaks of federal grants. It's pretty insane. Uh, yes, Guided School Tours, the three cost is pretty good if you have upgraded sponsors and it's just easy to spam out along with something like an arcade or, a, or one of the playgrounds. But generally in the early, like this is round one, I don't consider the cost too much if it's between three, four or five. It's just, yeah, you have to spend an action on the sponsor, whether it, if it's at three or four, it doesn't particularly matter too much. Don't, don't ask me where to place Aquarium on the map, though. I cannot tell you. It is kind of awkward to place on some maps. Herpetologist, uh, so similar boat to these other ones. Going to be depending on the projects. Debating whether to put it above or below these. I might put it above. Because the reptiles are generally pretty cheap. Uh, if someone builds a reptile house, they're incentivized to play a lot of reptiles, and you can benefit off that. But there are many other better choices. Hydrologist, very similar to Geologist. It's going to be in the same tier. Funnily enough, I just kind of like Geologist better. I don't really, can't really explain it. But I feel like there are a lot of maps where you want to cover spots next to rock earlier, such as Hollywood Hills. Observation Tower, Park Restaurant's kind of even, but it just seems to me that there are a lot of maps where you want to cover the rock spaces first. 
So for that reason, I like geologists slightly better, but hydrologists also super solid. You're going to get a lot of benefit from either of these. Um, I guess on maps like Silver Lake, hydrologist is a lot better than geologist. So it is it is pretty map dependent. Ice cream piles, yes, of course, geologist is insane. For sure, very map dependent, but on any map, I'd be very comfortable starting with either of them. Medical breakthrough. Um, really good ability, giving you a conservation point every break. The instant power is to appeal for each project that you've already supported. That makes it more of a mid to late game card because of the super high requirement. So it's kind of similar to Gorilla Field Research. If you have science help, feel free to keep it and start with it. If you don't, it could be a trap. Medical Breakthrough is less good than Science Museum, which we'll get to a little bit later. But I still don't mind keeping it. I'm going to put it like next to Gorilla Field Research. Could be a bit high for it. I might move it down a bit later. But really good ability, just very awkward to play, obviously. Yeah, you would need science help. If you had something like Federal Grants and Guerrilla Field Research, easy keep. If you have just Federal Grants, then still a decent pick because you can start, you can get three science tags from universities always. And that could be a good reason to just ignore hand size for a little while. Meerkat Den, so kind of similar to, well, the comparison is to Baboon Rock and like Aquarium and Cable Car, gives you two tickets for each time a herbivore is played in your zoo, but it's a lot better than Baboon Rock because for starters it only costs five strength, so you don't need an X token to play it, and secondly, herbivores are just easier to play. Especially when you get a big one like an elephant and you can flock many things in the same enclosure, they become really, really efficient. So I like Mika Den quite a lot. Obviously, if herbivores are one of the base projects, this becomes like a 100% keep. But if it's not, it's still going to be like a roughly middle of 75%. I would, I would keep this without a project reason to a lot of the time. Because I don't mind leaning super deep into herbivores and just getting my points that way. Hello, Bob. Yeah, I like Meerkat Den a lot. Diversity Researcher would be much higher if it wasn't for the upgraded sponsor tag. Yeah, and this, so we can talk about the shape of the building a bit. It is super useful. It's, it's like a petting zoo shape, and we know how good the petting zoo shape is on a ton of maps like outdoor areas, just really helps you cover the map quickly. And yeah, it, it's an easy place to shape, uh, easy shape to place, but just gives you a ton of appeal as well. Getting six herbivores can be a bit tricky, but if you do, then you've got a ton of points along the way and an end game shield, you, you're going to be a good chance of winning. Migration recording. It allows you to reuse release projects. Uh, you can support the same project twice, just in on different sizes. And every time you support a release project, you get an extra conservation point. It also gives you an immediate X token, so it's never a bad thing to play. Uh, getting an X token is a fine action. Like, I think I would get an X token for an action two or three times a game on average anyway, so this is just doing that, but also giving you a sponsor card to play. And then the ability itself can be insane depending on the, the type of game you're playing, but it's like really scary to come up against. Just giving you the extra conservation point, it can easily be worth two or three conservation points by the end of the game just from the extras. And just allowing you to reuse one of your projects can be priceless. It's it's uh, quite good. Having said that, I still think there are things that you could justify picking ahead of it. 
I'm going to put it like slightly ahead of Arcade, I think, somewhere around the Guided School Tours pick. Obviously, the science tag, super useful as well. We can see there are a lot of cards that combo with science here. Yes, it is kind of speculative. Like, you never know how many release projects you're going to see, but chances are you're going to see some during the game, and you'll be glad you played this when you do. Native farm animals. Okay, so we'll go through the three native sponsors. They're all slightly different, but they all fill sort of the same role, which is early game points. Native farm animals is easily the most abusable out of all of them. There are some maps where it's just crazy, like Park Restaurant is a perfect map for it. It is super easy to get 15 appeal when you play this, or something like 12 plus appeal when you play this. You want to be building around the center of your map anyway, you just have to leave some gaps around the edges, you have an instant 12 appeal. Um, and that's insane for a card, that's like, that's like if you have six herbivores from Meerkat Den, that's 12 appeal. Uh, if you get 12 appeal in one go from native farm animals, exactly the same, so really insane value on some maps. So kind of map dependent, but I'm keeping this a lot of the time. On some on some maps, it's 100%. On other maps, it's less good. Like Silver Lake, uh, this card is not that good. So I'm not keeping this all the time, but it's going to be around the bottom of 95%. Same story. Oh, sorry. The end game as well is not bad. Uh, it combos with Natural Asu quite a bit. Sometimes you just don't want to build too much. Like if you're releasing a lot of things, then you can uh, use native farm animals quite effectively to get like an easy one or even two or three conservation points at the end of the game. Native lizards is similar, but has much less upside on some maps than native farm animals. This is just for every rock space you're connected to, you get one appeal straight away. There are some maps like Hollywood Hills, where this is the easiest nine appeal you'll ever get. Ice cream, ice cream parlors and park restaurant are also pretty good maps for this. Observation Tower is pretty good as well. Just a really solid way of getting a lot of early appeal, usually in like the second or third break. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about the end games for it. And then obviously has more benefit if one of the projects requires herbivores or reptiles in this case. Native seabirds, exactly the same, but water instead of rock. Um, so better on maps like uh, Silver Lake, outdoor areas, it's okay, not amazing. Uh, what are the maps? Commercial Harbor, it's pretty good, but just slightly, slightly less good. But I'm still tempted to keep these a lot of the time, just kind of map dependent. So... <laughs> You can see there are a lot of uh, good playable sponsors here that I'm inclined to keep. Okapi Stable. Speaking of good and playable sponsors, this is just simply not one of them. I've already said how the six cost is really hard to justify. This lets you play sponsors for money, which early game can really hurt your tempo if you use it too often. And the shape is quite quite awkward. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of covering a lot of spaces with these buildings. It's uh, worse than free range, though. It's like if you're picking this, even if herbivores is one of the base projects, and you start with a meerkat den, I'm still not sure I'd start with a carpy stable. I think there are 65 better choices for sponsor cards. If you're playing this, like, I think the only situation you could justify it is if herbivores is one of the base projects or species diversity is one of the base projects and it's a high income map like ice cream parlors or park restaurant and you have a ton of extra money, then maybe you could justify playing it. But just really reconsider if you're starting with this. I'm not a fan. 
They are fun to look at, though. I'll, I'll agree with that. Ornithologists. So, uh, similar to these other expert cards, but birds are the best animals to play, and your opponents will want to play birds, like the eagles or the giant aviary birds that are just super efficient when they fit in the large bird aviary. So, for that reason, I'm, like, really happy starting with this, even if birds aren't on the projects. I'd put this at the top of 75%. Uh, just a really solid card that's going to give you a lot of money throughout the game. It even encourages you to play birds, which is always a good thing. I think if Okapi Stable cost 3, it would be a lot better. Maybe even playable better. It could use that kind of buff. But yeah, honestly, I'll just super solid. I would, I'd be starting this a lot of the time. Penguin pool. Um, we're actually kind of running out of room on this ninety-five percent. I'm, I'm going to move aquarium up. The penguin pool is one of the ninety-five percent ones because, like aquarium, like meerkat den, it just gives you a lot of extra points for something that you want to be doing, which is playing birds. Birds are the best animals in the game. This is going to be ahead of the playgrounds for me. I'd like put it slightly behind Hydrologist, Geologist. You don't even need to start with other birds. It's just generically a very, very good card. I'm definitely going to have to do some rearranging here. I did this before, but I didn't realize there were so many cards in 95%. Uh, obviously, if you get six birds, it gives you a conservation point. And if you get six birds, you'd be very happy. I mean, if I had four good sponsors in my hand, I'm more than happy to start with all four. Like, these, these percentages... Uh, don't lie, if I have four good sponsors of these, I'm keeping four. <laughs> sponsors are, are that important to winning. Polar Bear Exhibit. Uh, we, I just talked about birds being the best animals in the game. Well, actually, it might be bears that are the best animals in the game. There are so many good bears. Like the sun bear, most people know is amazing. Uh, on par with the eagles in terms of strength. But also things like the red panda, giant panda, uh, Eurasian brown bear, all these are really efficient to play. And the added benefit of this guy is that it's when anyone plays a bear. So you can discourage your opponents from playing the best animals in the game, which is great. And if they do play them, you just get two appeal. The shape is kind of awkward, it's like an opposite Akapi stable. Um, it's often not hard to hit three bears, but hitting six is like, I don't think I've ever hit six before, so you can usually pretty reliably get one conservation point from it, but you just play it to get the extra tickets. And then obviously if there's species diversity, this becomes 100% keep because giving two icons towards that is insane. So if there's species diversity, always, always, always keep this card. No one has ever hit six before. I think you might be right. I think you might be right. I'm keeping this top of 90%. Um, if there's no species diversity, it's still strong, but I would rate these other cards higher most of the time. Uh, primatologist. Well, not much to say. It's similar to these, but... Just worse because primates are less common, but obviously in four player games it still might be worth playing anyway because you're going to get money because there are just not that many animals to play. Someone's going to play a primate eventually. Uh, I think there are nine or ten bear icons in the game going back to the polar bear. Yeah, nine sounds about right. So yes, it's possible to hit. A lot of them are big though, so it's hard to hit. Quarantine Lab. Just a pretty solid all-round card. Uh, it costs three, which is super cheap. Gives you a science tag, which is always useful. Gives you an X token like migration recording. So never a bad thing to play. 
but obviously the main use for it is just giving you protection from all these bad abilities, um, which is really nice. Uh, it feels great when your opponent tries to pill for you or hypnosis you and they just forget that you have quarantine lab and they can't, and then they restart their turn. That is one of the best feelings in the game. So I'm pretty high on quarantine lab. The end game is not always the easiest to hit, but not the hardest to hit either. I mean, you can work towards five continents. If you get if you get four partner zoos, you're going to hit it all the time. So it's ahead of, it's around here, I'd say, kind of the, towards the top of 90%. I might move some of these guys down because we're getting a bit I'll keep native farm animals as 95% because it is a lot better than these two, but we'll move these two down a little bit. <laughs> Don't start bringing up petting zoo animals in here. <laughs> Release of patents. Uh, for every, so max of 25 appeal. For every science icon in your zoo, you get one conservation point up to a maximum of three. And... For each conservation point you get that way, your opponents get two money. Um, not bad at all. Getting three conservation points from one card is really, really good. The downside is giving your opponent six money if you do that, which is kind of a big deal, honestly. But if you have a way of getting these early science tags like a Federal Grants or like any of these other science sponsors and you're starting uni, it's a great way to get an early card upgrade. So I don't mind this card at all. It's going to be somewhere in the bottom of 90%, I would say. Just because there are a ton of these sponsors that I'd rather pick ahead of it. Because the way I see conservation points is they're more geared towards the end game. Obviously, you're in a race to get to five conservation points or eight conservation points. But if the, the rewards on the track aren't that good and you're already supporting a project to get your upgrade, then the points can come later. It's still obviously really beneficial if you're getting three conservation points from it because it's just a lot of points. It's going to be somewhere at the bottom of 90, maybe just below migration. I'm going to move migration ahead of gutter school tours. You like release of paintings to help out new players when teaching a four player. Funny. <laughs> Here you go. You can have money while I just get super ahead in points. Love it. Rhesus Monkey Park. Suffers the same kind of problem as Primatologist and Baboon Rock in that primates are just kind of hard to play a lot of them. Um, I will say the shape of it is actually really good on some maps, like uh, Research Institute can help you get that university pretty quickly. Park Restaurant, good at covering around the restaurant. Ice Cream Parlors, it's particularly good if you have a if you have an early sponsor that you want to play, it can cover that player sponsor for money spot immediately. So I don't mind it on some maps actually. And it gives you an X token straight away, so it's never like a bad, bad thing. It's going to be towards the top of Consider. I don't know if I'd put it ahead of Bard Owl Hut or not, but it's around that tier. There are some maps where I will just pick it for the shape if I have no other sponsors. It's just something to play early. And yeah, if it's giving you some X tokens throughout the game, it's fine. Science Institute. Well, obviously, very, very dependent on a few things. Like, if you have a need for science icons, such as Gorilla Field Research, Medical Breakthrough, Science uh, Museum. If you don't have a need for them, then why are you playing it, really? But it, it has its uses. Like, this is very playable in certain situations. For example... I had a game of like a month or two ago where 
First move, I played Science Institute. Second move, I supported the research conservation project for two icons and got a second worker straight away. That's obviously very rare, but it definitely has its uses and it can enable some of your science combos. So it's one that you should always consider. Do I have a need for these icons? Otherwise you'd be happier picking a lot of these other cards ahead of it. And if you have no use for these, then it can be just a trap to play. It just calls the break or something instead. Science Lab. Uh, it's on a very solid tier with Explorer. Like, it's one of the best cards that requires an upgrade. It has a good ability, drawing a card from reputation range uh, immediately and every break, which is pretty insane. And then it's not too hard to hit two endgame shields on it. So for that reason, it gives you a lot of point ceiling. It makes it like generally when you upgrade sponsors, you want to be playing a lot of sponsors and you want to be having a lot of endgame points from those sponsors, which makes it very hard to beat if you get anywhere near 100 points. So if you're doing that kind of game plan, then this is a perfect card for that. Some people like BDW and and YAD would consider this a good enough reason to upgrade sponsors by, it, by itself. I'm less inclined to believe that. I, th I still rate it pretty highly. I am I would take this a lot of the time, but I would take other things ahead of it. If I'm looking at this honestly, I would, I would be keeping Quarantine Lab ahead of this most of the time, unless I had another reason to upgrade sponsors. Kind of a weird position for it, but... Science Library. <laughs> you know, for a time there, I was ahead of you, so... Science Library. I'm putting this right at the top. Just, just below Archaeologist. Even ahead of Aquarium, I would say. This gives you a ton of money throughout the game. Like... Most people rate federal grants super highly because it gives three money instantly and three income. This gives you two money instantly and a point, which is basically like an income in the early game. And then just any time a science icon is played, you get two money. And the end game is worse than federal grants, but still not super hard to hit a lot of the time. But just gives you a lot of money throughout the game. And if this is a four player game, it could be at the very top of the list. Because think about how many good science sponsors there are and how many that your opponents are going to play throughout the game. It's going to give you a lot of money. Yeah, I, I rate this card very highly. Uh, I have I would have a hard time not picking it. I would need four other amazing cards to not pick this. Science Museum. One of the best sponsors in the game. Just the really awkward requirement is what keeps it down a bit but much more upside than Medical Breakthrough. This gives you a conservation point immediately, and then one for each science tag that you play, plus it gives you two money for each science tag already in your zoo, which is going to be a minimum of five. So it's always giving you ten money plus one conservation point, plus future conservation points for each science tag you play. One of the best cards in the game if you have a science setup, then you'd always, always keep this, but you don't always have that start. Um, it's going to be ahead of Medical Breakthrough, though. I might move Medical Breakthrough down a bit, and then Gorilla Field Research up a little bit. Something like that makes sense to me. So if I had a science start, start with a sponsor with a science tag, I'd always keep this, but... Otherwise, it's, it's, uh, it can be tricky to play. <laughs> sea Turtle Tank. Good for the Reptile Icon. It's kind of a beginner trap card, I think, though. 
the thing is, it, like sunbathing gives you all right value. Um, from the way that the animals are balanced, generally drawing a card is worth about three money, and then sunbathing lets you sell a card for four money. But it lets you sell bad cards in your hand that you don't need for money, which is a good thing. But no points and no endgame points makes it pretty underwhelming. Plus a five cost is annoying. The shape is annoying. It needs to touch water. It's like slightly better than free range monkeys and Okapi stable. I have played it before. I don't play it very often. It's going to be great with the ocean icon. Oh yeah. So in the expansion, I think they, they do change it. So there's an ocean icon, which would make it better, but as it stands. Like, the early money can be useful, but also I don't often want to be playing a lot of reptiles into my hand, uh, into my zoo. And a lot, a lot of the reptiles sunbathe anyway, so a, lo a lot of the time you're doubling up with that ability. Alright, here we go, side entrance. Best sponsor in the game. Um... Completely broken on pretty much every map. It gives you way too much. It costs three. Why? It's uh, so good. So you place this little two sides on your map. Has to be touching two border. Has to be on two border spaces. Um, but it doesn't have to be adjacent to any other building that you've already placed. So that ability alone can be great on certain maps like. Outdoor areas, it's an easy way to get to the gate straight away, get those big enclosures. Uh, Research Institute, you can start on the right side to get your, your university early and then put side entrance, side entrance on the left side to connect to the Research Institute early. Observation Tower is great because there's a spot on the map, or there are a few spots on the map where you can place it and just have five buildings, five different buildings surrounding it. And for each different building you have surrounding it, you get two income per building. Then on top of that, if you fill up your zoo, you get five appeal. They could remove this and it would still be in keep 100%. Because you don't often hit this, but when you do, five appeal is a lot of, like, a lot of appeal to get at the end of the game. I think one of the best things about this card is if you play it in round one, it really forces your opponent or opponents to cause the break. Because if they don't cause the break, you have four or five insanely efficient actions of just building a single kiosk or single pavilion next to the side entrance. And each time you do that, you're getting three plus income. So if your opponents just let you single build all along side entrance, you are going to have like 25 income to their 10 income in the first break. And with that sort of lead, you should be uncatchable. Just completely busted this card. I would be fine if they banned it, along with Archaeologist. Spokesperson, really solid card. Uh, the one science requirement can be annoying, but if you start with the two, rep two reputation uni, it's not a problem. You won't always get to start with that, and then it's like kind of annoying if you have to start with the two science you need to play this, it defeats the purpose a little bit. But just really solid, I'm keeping this most of the time. It is a it is one of those cards that enables a round one upgrade. You get your university, you cover the reputation spot on the map, and you're very close to four or five reputation. And then in the future, it's just going to continue pumping out reputation whenever you play any of these great sponsor cards. It even gives you a good reason to take the two science university. So really solid early for getting your first upgrade and second worker. Second worker and eight reputation. Very good way to hit that early. And then, yeah, just some late game reputation can be worth quite a few points can help you get to those uh, conservation point spots or just hit the end for favorizu or something. 
All right, we have all these sponsorship cards and they're obviously going to go in depending. They are really good though. The Mad Hat, excuse me, the Mad Hatter card. I don't really see it. This guy's not wearing a hat. Anyway, yeah, it's suit it's um it depends on just if you start with one of these icons in your zoo. If you do, they're pretty useful. Um as I said, we like federal grants because it gives three income. Well, even having one of these icons gives three income. And then late game, if you're like really focusing on herbivores and you have three or five, it gives you a huge income boost in the mid to late game. Oh, right, spokesperson is the Mad Hat of so many hats. Yes, yes, got it. So yeah, if you even if you're starting with a single herbivore animal, I'd be very fine starting with these cards, but it just depends on what you start with. And for that reason, they'll go in depending. Um, for two-player games, I'm going to put them ahead of these guys because they're, they're going to consistently give you income each break and then they give you immediate points as well, at least one. But in three or four player games, I would rate these other ones slightly higher. Uh, obviously, Primates is going towards the bottom. Reptiles kind of around the bottom. Birds right at the top. Birds I might even consider 75%, but you really don't want to start it unless you have a bird icon in your zoo. Um, I'm going to be a bit nicer to these breeding ones and get them up here just to save the tier list a bit. Yeah, these ones are just very easy to go together because they all, they all do the same thing, just for different animals. Spotted Hyena Compound. So this was obviously in the thumbnail of the video, and I'm pretty low on this card. Um, yes, like I've said a billion times this video, if Predators are one of the projects, then this is an easy keep. If they're not one of the projects, I'm not keeping this a lot of the time. It gives you a hunt ability, but it's sort of a weird hunt ability, in that it scales with how many Predator icons you have in your zoo. So if you have five Predator icons, it's going to hunt five which is a great way of helping you find something like an eagle or a sun bear. But it really requires you to go deep into predators, and in the early game you don't really know if you want to go deep in predators or not. And it's not as good of a reason to spam a single animal type as something that gives you points, like a meerkat den or a penguin pool. Having said that, it does synergize well with the pack synergy, so if you play a pack animal or... It gives you like good reason to play pack animals and spam predators. It's just an extra icon each time. But I'm going to put it towards the low end of consider. Even behind Monkey Park, honestly. I find myself playing Monkey Park more often than Spotted Hyena Compound. It's definitely fun to play. It is really fun when you have something like so when you play the cheetah, for example, it has two predator icons. You're you're going to hunt for like five and five. That's really fun to have a ton of cards into your hand and have to pick one. But yeah, the ability is just less good than getting points. The hunt ability, when we're talking about the balance of animals, the hunt ability is worth like one, I think, from memory. One for each hunt. Because you're not always guaranteed to find an, a an animal. You could just find only sponsors or projects and get nothing for it. We're, oh, we're getting close to the end, but there are, there are a lot of good sponsors coming up here. Talented Communicator. Um, I'm going to put this ahead of Explorer. Maybe even ahead of some of these other ones. So one of the tricky things about Ark Nova is, well, one of the main, like, 
milestones of the early game is to get a second worker. And this is just a slam dunk easy way of getting a second worker. One of the main problems of upgrading sponsors is it's hard to unlock your fourth worker because you can't get it from the, your third partner zoo. And this solves that issue. On some maps, your last worker is worth two conservation points, and this fixes that issue. So it's a really, really solid card. I am keeping this 95% of the time if it's in my opening hand, unless I have like three or four of these other good cards that I really want to keep. And I will absolutely upgrade sponsors just for this card alone. It means you can support your first project and get the five income or snapping or something else and just play this for your second worker and you're still, um, you still have great tempo on getting your, all your upgrades done. <laughs> Do they have the uh, licensing rights from Razer? That is the Razer because I have that headset. Well, I have a similar headset. I would assume that they've done their homework and they got it. Or they got the green light. Tech Institute. Easily one of the best cards in the game. Uh, science icon, really useful, really helpful. Gives you an X token immediately and then gives you an X token every break. Absolutely amazing. The game is so much easier to play when you have X tokens, and this just gives you an X token every single break. Um, based on how the animals are balanced, an X token is worth approximately three money, so it's like on par with federal grants, except the end game is slightly harder to hit and it's one strength uh, more expensive, so for that reason I have it slightly below Archaeologist. I think Archaeologist has a lot more upside on certain maps, but Tech Institute, a solid pick that I would always keep. It's MIT. Well, there you go. I did not know that. Veterinarian. I think I'm probably a bit... Or I think I was probably a bit too high on this card. So it has the same end game as Tech Institute, three universities, which on some maps is great. On some maps, you don't really want to get the third uni if there's no points for it. But the ability to support a conservation project at strength 4 is amazing. This particularly shines when you upgrade association. It lets you do those multi-association actions in the late game very easily. Like you can support a project at, like if your association's at 5, you can support a project at 4 and then spend only 2x tokens to get a partner zoo as well. Or you only spend 1x token to get 2 reputation as well. Um, it's easy to forget about having vet, which I do quite a lot. That is one downside of it. Um, for low skill players, you'll just forget you have it and won't make use of its ability. The other cool thing is you get instant money depending on how many university, universities you have. I do like to greed this out to get five money a lot of the time, but I've seen top players play it when they have zero universities just for the ability. Um, I think waiting for all three universities can be a mistake. What well, is is a mistake most of the time, but I like getting it at two. And then, yeah, obviously the science tag, super useful, and the ability is great. It's going to save you an X token so often. So where do we put it after having said all that? It's got to be like at the top of 90%, somewhere around Polar Bear Exhibit. Maybe even ahead of seabirds now. Something like that feels right. <laughs> yes, obviously that useful tag for archaeologist. Victory column. So kind of mirrors arcade. It has the opposite end game. You get to appeal. If you have less appeal than every other zoo or than other zoos, Gives you one appeal immediately, uh, but it gives you one appeal as an income, which is really nice. Playing this early is great 
because in the early game, one appeal is like equivalent to one income for your first five appeal, I think. So it's basically giving you one income immediately and one at the start of the next break. So re really solid. Um, it's the just the income is ahead of arcade. Helps you out a lot more in the early game. Maybe the best thing about it is it gives you the points. Like the way that Board Game Arena scores is it goes through all, all, your, all the end games one player at a time. So if you've already had your end games and then your opponent's getting end games, you're not going to see any more points added to your score. Except Victory Column comes in right at the end of the, like, the last thing that gets scored. So if you've lost all hope and you see, see your opponent, like, just getting one ahead of your score and then Victory Column comes out and gets you one ahead of their score, it is the best feeling in the world. And it's happened to me more than once. It's happened <laughs> to a lot of people in this, uh, secret Ark Nova Discord more than once, so that's a great feeling when that happens. The artwork's pretty good as well. I'm interested to see what the change will be for the Season 2 winner, which is also Yadi. Uh, we'll see what he has planned for that, but I am pretty high on this card. It's better than Arcade, but somewhere around Expert on the Americas, I think. Science Lab feels kind of high here, I'm not sure, but I know a lot of people would be yelling at me wanting Science Lab alongside these two. Water Playground, not much to discuss, it's uh, the same as Adventure Playground, but I like rocks better. Um, I think a lot of people will think these are super high as well, but I really love this early appeal. I would honestly pick them in this order. Waza Large. As far as upgraded sponsors go, it's somewhere in the middle. It's not quite good enough for these, like, the sole reason to upgrade sponsors, but it's better than something like Diversity Researcher or Basic Research, in my opinion. So I'm going to put it at the top of Consider. You'd want another reason to upgrade sponsors before you pick it. But if you have another reason, then it's just a solid addition. Just gives you a free size 5 enclosure. More of a mid-game card because of the high reputation requirement. But also the ability to ignore a condition of a large animal can be very, very useful. And it's something that is easy to forget about as well. Like, it lets you ignore partner zoos, which is super useful when you upgrade sponsors, because you are most likely only going to have two partner zoos. Waz are small. I feel like this is also a kind of beginner trap card. Um, the problem is... So, the instant ability giving you two money... For each small animal you have is is fine. It's more of a mid to late game thing, but it's still fine. I think it just encourages you to stay on small animals for too long. So it lets you play three small animals at a time, and then at the end of that turn you also get to snap up a small animal from the display which on a map like Commercial Harbour, where you sell cards, is actually insanely good. So it's much higher on Commercial Harbour than other maps. But I'm not a huge fan. I, I, I would put everything in the 75% tier ahead of Waza Small. Um, you'd consider it more if you had synergy like Expert on Small Animals, or maybe a Waza Special Assignment, which we're going to see next. But it's going to be somewhere around the middle of Consider. Maybe like ahead of the Monkey Park. Around there feels fine. Waza Special... Um, kind of scammed from this tier list. Because this is mostly focusing on the early game. And this is not an early game card. You can't play it early game because it requires 6 reputation. And you don't really want to play it early game because it limits your choices for the rest of the game. And it's very easy to get stuck. 
So you either pick small animals or large animals, and you can only play those for the rest of the game. But when you play small animals, you get two extra appeal, or if you choose large animals, you get four extra appeal for each one that you play. Then on top of that, it gives you a small or large animal from the deck, depending on which one you pick. Um, so, like, really, really, really scary card to come up against in the late game. But in the early game, it's not one that you're super excited about picking because you just don't know if it's going to be the sort of game where, like, yeah, I want to commit to only large animals. You just don't know at that stage. So it's going to be around the bottom of Consider. I'll, I'll put it slightly under while it's small. But I would, well... I would pick Monkey Park ahead of it most of the time, it just depends too much. Yeah, Commercial Harbour is an in interesting map in that regard, in that it does make a lot of these sponsors uh, quite a bit better, the ones that draw cards, because having a way to convert cards to money just makes any card draw useful, even if it's a bad card, whereas on other maps, if you draw a bad card, you're just stuck with it having to discard or hopefully pouch it or something, or sunbathe it. Zoo School. Very similar to Spokesperson. Um, I'll put it like, a, like one spot below, but really solid early game card. Uh, it's one of those cards that enables the round one upgrade, particularly if you start with the two reputation university, you play Zoo School straight away, you cover up the one reputation spot on your map, and then you have a card upgrade, bam, in two turns. The early conservation point can be useful uh, for an early game upgrade if you combine it with something like guided school tours, that's that's your two conservation points for another upgrade. That can be very useful. Uh, also, the drawing card from range is really, really nice early game when your card's action is not upgraded. Because if there's something really good on the display, then you can just put down Zoo School and snap it up immediately. Um, yeah, really solid starting pick. I'm, I'm picking Zoo School all of the time unless there are these other cards ahead of it. And that is all the sponsors we have, so let's go through the list and see if there's anything else that we want to get rid of. Or if we want to move around, not get rid of. So nothing in 100% is changing, I think I'm fine with 95% as well. This feels roughly right to me. Science Lab does feel a bit out of place. I think I'm going to move it up along with these other upgrades. Asia before Cable Car, I stand by. I rate Cable Car super highly. Uh, because it just gives me a great reason to play the Alpine Ibex, which is my favourite animal in the game. So, bam, you get four extra appeal when you do that. Um, yeah, one of the takeaways is how good the science sponsors are. If you look at the stats of the top 20 players, a lot of them average four plus science icons every single game. And you get some of them from universities, but you get a lot of them from sponsor cards. And particularly in those games where you get, like, a science museum, uh, it can just single-handedly win you the game. So I'm always on the lookout to get science icons to enable something like a science museum or a medical breakthrough later in the game. Oh, I'll always play the Ibex no matter what, but Cable Car is just insane with it. I'm pretty happy with the rest of it. can see that it just shows how good sponsors are, that there are this many sponsors I would pick 90% of the time. 
Uh, in your opening hand, you really do want to start with as many sponsors as you can, because they're harder to find, and the good ones really impact the game. It's perfectly fine if you want to start with four of these sponsors and just find an animal later, if none of the animals are particularly good in your opening hand. That's very kind of you. I, I'm I'm very much looking forward to your tier list, Yad. I will obviously put a link to that when it is up, but it's not up yet, so everyone has to deal with this for the time being. But I don't. Well, I think there are some differences between our tier lists. I don't rem remember yours a hundred percent, but I don't think there are too many glaring like, holy crap, this is totally different than what I think. Maybe Guided School Tours being your number one was a bit weird, but apart from that... Engineer, I'm more than fine keeping down here. Honestly, I, I really don't like the card at all, but I've seen, I've seen good players use it effectively. And yeah, the, these three are, are on a tier on their own for sure. Yeah, this was the Ark Nova Sponsors tier list. <laughs> Wondering why Yeti's not complaining about the victory column placement? Well, it's still pretty high. Yes, that's true. I did go for opening hand strength. Yeah, so like the problem is in the mid game, you sort of know what you need. Well, I guess that's not true. Not all players will know this, but it's more clear what you need. And like in the late game, you can't really justify putting side entrances the best card ever because it just doesn't have enough time to ramp up its income. If you're playing this in the last round, then it's pretty useless. But I think this was a, I think judging them based on the starting hands is like the most fair way of doing it. It's obviously less fair on late game cards like Waza Special Assignment. But I think judging this from like a total game or mid game is just in, in, even more impossible to do than it currently is. Anyway. We will end the video there. I will leave a link to this tier list in the description of this video. And thank you everyone for watching. And yes, I will link Yadi's tier list when it is up. Have a good rest of the day. Sponsors uh, tips and tricks video is interesting. I would need to come up with a lot of different tricks, but that's not a bad idea at all, actually. I'll, I'll consider that. Thank you.